All right, I've just had about enough of this shit. All right. I've been seeing stuff on the internet about, we've raised $600 million to rebuild Notre Dame, but what are we going to do about the poor? Well, let's talk about that. Because I want to know what you've done for me in the last, well, since the Great Depression ended. I want to know what you've done for me since 1939. I want to know what you've done for me in the last 56 years that you have controlled the city that I live in. Okay? You want to talk about $600 million to rebuild Notre Dame, which is a thousand-year-old building that has endured over famine, plague, revolution, starvation, war, bombings, and all sorts occupations by Nazis. I mean, all sorts of awful crap. The, the, the Notre Dame Cathedral has had to endure. And now you're going to bitch and moan about them trying to rebuild it. About people who are donating their money that they can do with what they please. You're bitching about them spending that money on rebuilding a thousand-year-old monument to human creativity and faith. Now, I'm not a man of faith. I, I have not been a man of faith for far longer uh, than, than I, I was a believer. But I do deeply respect people of faith, and I respect people's faith systems. Now, now I've heard... All sort, you know, I have been used as a cudgel and a shield by the far left all my life. Now it's always the left that talks about let's let's help the poor, let's let's uh, let's let's uplift the poor. Well, what the hell have you done in my neighborhood since 1939? My whole neighborhood has collapsed into just abject poverty since the Great Depression. And, and y'all have y'all y'all's master plans and urban revitalization and all that stuff has always excluded my neighborhood. And I, people talk about we're going we're going to go over this this here video because this this covers this covers a, a lot of the issues that I want to talk about. So let's go ahead let's go ahead and get into Mr. Crowder here for a second, and I'm going to go a little bit deeper into what Mr. Crowder has to say because he's 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 got the right idea. But he's looking at the forest, and you see, you can't see the forest for the trees. Well, some people can't see the trees for the forest, and, and Mr. Crowder's talking about the forest, and he's right about the forest, and then we're going to take it down to the level of the trees in this here video. Uh, this is going to be a, this is going to be kind of a long rant. This may go beyond 30 minutes, which my last three videos I put up been about 30 minutes long. This is going to be maybe a little bit longer than 30 minutes, but I got I got something to say about this because I am pissed off. I am tired of being used as a cudgel and a shield because you know what you do with me, Representative Ocasio Cortez, when you use me to beat rich people over the head for being rich, I get the bruises. Do you know what happens to me when you use me as a shield to protect yourself from valid criticism? I'm the one who gets those strikes, and I am tired of taking your crap. You are a crap weasel, Representative Ocasio-Cortez. Senator uh, Sanders, you are a crap weasel. Senator Pelosi, Senator Schumer, you are all crap weasels. Okay, and I'm tired of y'all talking about crumbs, Thousand calling thousand dollars crumbs. I live off of seven hundred and seventy one dollars a month. Do you know the last time I bought new clothes? I haven't bought new clothes in six years. Even the clothes that I'm wearing, I've had for a long time. I can't afford to buy new clothes. That's why I buy clothing of high quality so that it can last long enough for me to be able to afford to buy new clothes. I can't go out shopping at Shop Mall every weekend like y'all do. So shut the hell up. I don't think y'all people living in your people living in 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 Williamsburg and and all sorts of you know Georgetown and 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 here in in Toledo they're living in Perrysburg and Sylvania and these are all wealthy people who are on the far left they call themselves liberals but they are not they're not the least bit liberal I don't have a problem with liberals I like liberals Tim Poole is a liberal I like him and I like what he has to say I agree with most of the things that he has to say and what we disagree on is pretty minor and petty not worth arguing over and I know Mr. Poole has gone through poverty as well. 
I know Mr. Warwick has gone through poverty as well. I can tell by the way that they behave and the way that they act and the way that they carry themselves, their comportment. I can tell they've been very close to where I have been and where I am. And so let's, let's, let's uh, let, me, let me just do a response video here. <laughs> Into the top socialist lies, top five myths that people. Um, I, I guess these just continually. Let's just start with this: Bernie Sanders, town hall, and Fox News. It personified everything wrong with the left wing. Let's start with this. Uh, I happen to believe, Joe, that we have an absurd tax system, and while millions million. of people today are paying actually more in taxes than they anticipated. Yeah, but you're talking about pay 70% tax rate. You want people to pay even more taxes, Senator Sanders. So shut the hell up with your lying mouth, man, your lying lips. How can you tell a leftist is lying? Their lips are moving. Amazon, Netflix, and dozens of major corporations as a result of Trump's tax bill pay nothing in federal taxes. I think that... President Trump could cure cancer and put men on Mars and, and, and they would still, you know, they, they would take the credit and they would blame him for causing cancer in the first place. He could cure AIDS and, and they would blame him for causing it in the first place. These people are out of their damn minds. That's a disgrace. What you don't say is that everybody paid less in taxes than they did under Obama or they would under you, you piece of shit. By the way, do you notice he said dozens of corporations? Dozens. Just run a quick search and see how many corporations are in the United States. Hint. It's a lot more than dozens. <laughs> <laughs> if we missed a couple of dozen, that's okay. They're pay, this, sure is one, this is the dishonesty. They're paying more than they expected because they want an even bigger tax cut. That you and the media deceived them into thinking they wouldn't even get. Even the New York Times did an expose on this. Many people who got a tax cut didn't actually believe that they got one at all. Most people saved money, paid less in taxes this year. The middle class benefited from the tax cut. Everyone did. But I bet you're paying more than you thought. Well, what, what are you saying? You thought you were going to get a bigger price break. Screw you! <laughs> this is how socialism works. It deceives people into thinking they're worse off than they are by lying to them and then using that misery to get elected. Promising yes. to solve everyone's problem with free money. And, and this was... We'll get to the top five, I think the biggest myths, the most pervasive myths. All this was reiterated, there was an article this week announcing memes.tv, do you see it? It's an online socialist media network who, without a hint of irony, it'll be a paid, it'll be a paid subscription service. <laughs> Stephen, that's a tax. So I went okay. to their site to see what they were about. And again, let me know which socialist candidate you want us to live stream next week, starting at, uh, at 8 p.m. <laughs> Eastern, Sanders, Harris, Klobuchar, Buttgig, Warren. Um, I went to their site, Means TV, to see what they were, no surprises. I felt like this segment was long overdue. Let's cycle to the top five. All right, let's get yes. to the yeah. <laughs> Number five is that there is no class mobility. The cards are stacked against you. This comes directly from the new paid subscription social network. <laughs> what you only what really have like so many options. You can go to the factory, you can go to the college, or you can go to the army. What do I have to do so I can get into a position to where I can chase what I want to chase versus surviving? What? What? Oh, I don't know, I feel like I have no options. And you proceed to name all the options. Three unbelievable options. By the way, the options from those three We're options are probably at least 3,000 options. <laughs> but like, I could work at a factory, work your way up to vice president, work your way, in fact, this is in Detroit, this network, yeah. where a UAW worker costs the company average of over $130,000 a year. Well, I'm going to the military. Well, you need to get tuition paid for, work your way up to, I don't know, officer, not to mention serve your country. Yeah. Or oh, I gotta go to college and choose any of the hundreds of degrees available there? <laughs> this is like, I only got three options. <laughs> what? Why are you complaining? Because the options I got are only uh, infinity. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> the three options. All right. Now, we're going to talk about factories for a second. Now, my neighborhood, 43604, the Vistula Historic District, my neighborhood was the original industrial district of Toledo. This is where the factories were when this city was first built. Do you know how many factories are in this neighborhood now? One, Libby Glass Plant is still there. Since 1888, the Libby Glass Plant 
has been employing people in this neighborhood, and it's still there. And it's the last factory that's there. Do you know what these leftists have done since then, since the Great Depression? Well, they tore down the Autolite factory. They tore down Bingham, Stamp, and Die. They tore down every single small or light industry in this neighborhood. And they took away all the jobs. They also took away the Toledo interurban system, which is what got poor people from their houses to their jobs, either over uh, to the factories on North Champlain or over or downtown to where there were other jobs downtown. A lot of poor folks don't have cars, and cars are very expensive to operate here. And now what have you done since all these businesses have closed down in my neighborhood? What have you done? You have Jimmy rigged the legislation and the regulations and the zoning uh, of this neighborhood to where it is near impossible to open up any new businesses here. I mean, if I want to, and I've tried this twice now, if I want to open up a commercial enterprise in my neighborhood, they're, 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 they're tearing down the remaining commercial buildings uh, that are in this neighborhood. Um, they're, they're, most of them are empty and, and boarded up, but that doesn't mean that they need to be torn down. They can be fixed. A lot of them are, are not in that bad a shape. Uh, they just need to be fixed. They don't need to be updated or modernized. They just need to be fixed up, cleaned up, painted, floors polished, put walls back where they got tore down, put, up, put in some new wiring. But other than that, they're, they're not in that bad a shape. But now there's a carryout, not four houses down from me. It's on the corner. It used to be called the Vegas carryout. That's sitting at the corner of Mulberry and Ontario. That carryout has been closed for a very, very long time. The building's not in that bad of shape. I mean, it could probably be opened up for less than $100,000. It could be fixed up and opened up and turned into a store that sells fresh fruits and vegetables and fresh meats uh, on a small scale to the folks in this neighborhood, which would be far more than what they have available to them right now within walking distance. But the, the, the zoning regulations require me as an entrepreneur, to tear down the two houses, the, the house behind the Vegas carryout and the house next door to the Vegas carryout, both of which are occupied with families in them, with children, I would have to, and these are liberals that are doing this. This is not conservative. This is not a conservative policy. These are not Republicans that are doing this to this neighborhood. It are people with D's after their name that are doing this to this neighborhood. It, it, it's our mayor, Wade Capsicabitz. It's our whole city council. It's Tom Gibbons, our, our damn uh, 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 you know neighborhoods, uh, you know director of the Department of Neighborhoods. These are awful human beings that are making it impossible for people like me to open up businesses in our own damn neighborhoods so that we can give jobs to the people who live in our own damn neighborhoods so that maybe they can get out of poverty by working instead of taking the welfare that you've been shoving down our throats since 1965. Now, if I want to open up a business, if I want to reopen Vegas carryout, I have to tear them two houses down and I got to spend about $2.1 million on building a parking lot that's never going to get used because 95% of the people who would shop at the Vegas carryout building would be walking to that uh, commercial location. Why do I need to spend $2 million on a, 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 a paved parking lot for to reopen a store that's been closed for decades that y'all closed down in the first place with your economic policies and your over-regulation and your over-taxation and your, your business-unfriendly environment. This is, Toledo has a very business-unfriendly environment. They want to say they're business-friendly, but what they mean is they're multinational corporation friendly. They're not business friendly. They don't, they don't like entrepreneurs. They don't like small business. I mean, yeah, we've got ProMedica down on Summit Street, and that's been a, a great financial boon to the downtown district. However, it is still very, very difficult for just average folks to open up their own little mom and pop shop in these hundreds of empty uh, small commercial locations all throughout 43604, which includes the downtown area. 43604 includes what used to be known as Port Lawrence and what used to be known as Vistula. Now it's the downtown core area and the Vistula Historic District. That's 43604. 43604 is the original Toledo. 
And so why do I have to spend $2 million on a parking lot that nobody's going to use? This whole city is addicted to parking lots. All right, we've torn down this whole urban renewal through the 1960s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and today. All it's doing, urban renewal means, means urban erasure, urban deletion. They're deleting commercial buildings and opportunities for entrepreneurship are being deleted with dynamite and leveled to the ground and turned into parking lots that nobody gives a crap about. And the parking in downtown Toledo is still impossible because these parking lots are charging exorbitant rates to park in, in a dead downtown area. Who in the hell wants to pay the rates to park in downtown? Why do you think people don't go to the baseball games down at the, the, the Mud Hen Stadium? Why do you think there's like 1,500 or 2,000 people in a stadium that can hold close to 10,000? Because nobody wants to pay these parking rates. All right, nobody wants to park downtown because y'all have just turned it into a, a, a clown show. And, you know, nobody's going to be able to open up a business here. Nobody's opening up factories here because of the regulations that make it economically infeasible for small light industry to open up. And that's, that's what built this country in the first place. So, y'all, your, your corporation, dozens of corporations, dozens of corporations, yeah, there's far more than dozens of corporations in the U.S. and Senator Sanders. It's people like you who are running this, this city who have made it impossible for people like me to open up small industry with the means that we have available to us. I mean, you put in these all these these uh, charity uh, uh, these nonprofit uh, uh, entrepreneur um, investment uh, opportunities, but actually, I'm I'm in the I'm in such a low socioeconomic class that I don't even qualify for any of that help. Doesn't matter how smart I am. It doesn't matter how you know how much of a good head I got on my shoulders or how much sense I talk. It, my bank account prevents me from being able to participate in these so-called programs that are so-called designed to help me. They don't. They don't. They just help other people who already have lots of money to begin with, and that's disgusting. What y'all are doing is disgusting, and you're using me as a cudgel to beat rich people who have worked hard to earn the money that they've earned, to build the factories that they've built and expand to employ the massive number of people that they employ, people like me. And then you take me and you beat those people over the head until they shut their factories down. And what happens? Everybody in this neighborhood is out of a damn job. And it's your fault. It's your fault, Senator Sanders. It's your fault, Senator Pelosi. Senator Pelosi, I highly recommend, and you're talking about $1,000 crumbs. Well, what about that $10,000 booze bill for one night that you spent of taxpayer money that you spent boozing up your friends? I make $9,822 a year. That's just a little over nine crumbs, according to your uh, bigoted statement from 2017. I make nine crumbs a year, okay? Do you know what I could do with $1,000 right now? How dare you? How dare you look America in the face with a smile on your lying mouth and talk about crumbs for the poor when you have never been poor a day in your life and you can't even clean the poop off the streets of your own constituents' neighborhoods? So shut your mouth and go to bed, Nancy. You are drunk. Options to on ramps, basically. There are three on ramps to any option yeah. you want for the rest of your life. I, okay, this is this idea that there is no social mobility in the United States. The cars are stacked against you. Over the course of their lives, fifty-six percent of Americans will find themselves in the top ten percent. Seventy-three percent will spend at least more than a year in the top twenty percent. Okay, so the all right. Now we're going to get down to where the rubber meets the road. He is correct about that. But what the leftists are talking about are the poverty breakout rates in my neighborhoods like mine. Now, while Mr. Crowder is looking at a national level, let's look at a local level. Let's look at 43604. Now, in 43604, uh, the average breakout uh, they, the, the Bureau of Labor Statistics and the U.S. Census Bureau uh, took a, a, a survey on what the poverty breakout uh, rate by age is. 
And uh, that, that means when uh, people, how many, what percentage of the people in that zip code are able to break out of poverty and at what age they break out of that poverty. And the highest poverty breakout statistic in 43604 is the 18 to 34 year old uh, age group. And it is one quarter of 1% that ever breaks out of poverty in my neighborhood. One quarter of 1% of the people in my neighborhood between the ages of 18, 30, and 34 will be able to break out of poverty during the course of their lifetimes. Nobody, that's the highest percentage. Everybody else, every other age group is lower than that. Nobody is able to break out of, no percentage higher than one quarter of 1% is capable of breaking out of poverty in this neighborhood. Now, is that because of Republican policies? Is that because of evil factory owners? No. It's because of your goddamn victim mindset. It's because of your victim indoctrination. These people don't believe that they can break out of poverty, so they don't try. Because you've been bullshitting them for decades. Three generations now. Three generations of welfare dependency in my neighborhood. We're on the third generation of welfare dependency in my neighborhood. There are folks that live here where all three generations of their family are receiving welfare because you people have told them that they have no other options and that is a bald-faced lie because while you're telling them that they have no other options you're preventing other options from even coming into the neighborhood to begin with there is very few businesses that are operating in this neighborhood that will even hire people who live in it the pharmacy that's in this neighborhood doesn't hire local neighborhood folks. The most, uh, the, the only places you can get a job around here are Libby Glass, and there's very few job openings at Libby Glass because it's a very popular place to work. People like working for Libby Glass because it's a good place to work. And then y'all have been denigrating factories, you've been denigrating the military, and you've ruined college. I mean, good Lord, going to college right now is just a waste of money. I mean, because the degrees that you're going to get, the degrees that you encourage people to, to study for aren't degrees in STEM or anything like it's it's this uh, it's these social justice courses women's studies african american studies what are you going to do with that degree how are you going to earn money with that degree what what in the world who needs somebody who is a gender studies major in in the business world in in the income earning self sustaining world who needs a gender studies major who needs a a, a poverty studies major you don't need to major in poverty studies to understand poverty, you just need to go through it, which most of y'all never have. Senator Pelosi, until you eat until you eat your dinners out of a dumpster for as long as I have, or even for as long as a week, Senator Pelosi, why don't you go and eat your eat every single meal that you consume for a week? You dig that food out of a dumpster and then you eat it and then come back to me and talk to me about poverty. Until you have experienced homelessness, until you have experienced living in some of these rental hovels that these, these, these uh, you know, absentee landlords, most of whom are far left, uh, you know, they live in these crap holes that these landlords, these leftist landlords that, who don't even take care of their houses, you, until you live like that, don't don't talk to me about poverty and don't talk to me about crumbs. You know, social no social mobility in this country. You talk about there not being any social mobility in this country, and yeah, when you point to the census and the uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics um, numbers that one quarter of one percent of the the people between the ages of eighteen and thirty four are even capable of breaking out of poverty in my zip code. Yeah, you use those statistics, but then you conveniently ignore the fact that you caused the social conditions that created that statistic in the first place. So you're blaming people like me, and blaming people like President Trump, and blaming people like Mr. Crowder for, for causing these statistics with their extremist ideals and whatnot when you're the ones who are preventing factories from coming into our neighborhoods to provide jobs for us to work at in the first place. Leaving the only other options as getting into massive intractable debt, getting a gender studies degree that's never going to pay that college debt off or going into the military. But then you've spent the last 
30 years crapping on the military and crapping on people who did their military service like me out of one side of your mouth and then out of the other side of your mouth you crap on the military altogether and you crap on the mili- on people who make the choice to serve in the military so nobody who lives in these neighborhoods wants to go into the military because they don't want to suffer the social consequences for having made that decision in the first place. You're causing the conditions that you're complaining about and then blaming them on people who are actually trying to alleviate those conditions. Now, during the Obama presidency, he made what they, what they called promise zones. There were, there, were, there were a few promise zones. Uh, West Philadelphia was one of them. Conservative Resurgence, another YouTuber named Conservative Resurgence, did a great video on the, the corruption in West Philadelphia in that so-called promise zone. We, here in Vistula, we're, we are in just as bad of a situation as West Philadelphia. We're in just as bad of a situation as in most of Detroit. We're in that same situation. We were never a promise zone, but you know what we are now? We're an opportunity zone. But these businesses that may want to invest in this neighborhood are actually disincentivized from doing so because of the stupid regulations and the stupid overtaxation of, of uh, entrepreneurs being here. The smaller the business, the more regulations are in place to prevent that business from opening up in the first place. And it doesn't matter if it's a small business that only has five job openings. Those are five fucking jobs. That's five fucking more jobs than existed before, and you want to call that crumbs, and you want to do everything you can to prevent that small business from opening up. You know, you don't think that it's it's worthy of opening up unless it provides 10,000 jobs immediately. Well, I'm sorry. Rome was not built in a day. And, and, and Vistula and every other poverty-stricken neighborhood in the country is not going to be rebuilt overnight. Make America Great Again is not going to occur within the next five years. All right, it's going to be years we're going to have to clean up this mess that these far left wackadoos have done to our country. It's going to be years before we clean this stuff up and we're going to have to dig in and get our hands dirty and build it up. And that's include calling out these hypocrites and bigots who just hate poor people while they've got a smile on their face saying that they love poor and want to do everything they can to help the poor. Well, with all these, you know, poor, you know, poverty uh, 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 charities that y'all run, well, how come those charities can't file their Form 990s on a, on a regular basis? How come they got to go for three years without filing a Form 990 and get threatened by the IRS to have their uh, tax exemption status taken away because they're not following the rules? And then you finally put in some mostly deceptive, fraudulent, Nine, set of 990s in one case uh, in, in one case of a charity right here in this neighborhood uh, put in 990s that were uh, prepared by three different individuals what what, what what the hell kind of games do you think you're playing and how stupid do you think we are I mean y'all must think that all poor people are just as dumb as bag of hammers treat us like this y'all should be ashamed of yourselves y'all should be ashamed of yourselves I don't know how you can sleep at night I don't know how you can get up there and stand in front of people like me and spew that garbage out of your mouth that you've been spewing for decades. I don't know how you can do it. And, 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 and really, I, I do know how you can do it because you've been brainwashing all these people into believing that they're victims. You're saying, oh, you're a victim and I'm here to help you. Your white saviorism, your, your liberal white saviorism, and it ain't even liberal. Y'all are authoritarians. The regulations in Toledo that prevent small businesses from opening up are bloody Soviet in nature. I mean, this is awful. $2 million for a parking lot for a carryout that isn't even going to have 5% of its customer base driving to it in the first place. And there's plenty of on-street parking. It's on a corner. There's, there's enough room for three or four cars in front of that store and about five cars on the side of that store. And that's probably about the largest number of cars that's going to be coming to that store at any one time at any point that that store is ever open during the day. So there's plenty of parking already available on the street. But I still can't do it unless I spend $2 million on a parking lot that I don't need. You want me to spend money that I don't have on something that I don't need so that I can open up a store that should be open right now selling good, healthy food at fair and decent prices, which is completely unavailable in this neighborhood. The fact that I have to, I have to walk everywhere I go because I don't drive and I don't own a car. And I have to walk to the grocery store, which is about almost two miles from me. I have to walk to that grocery store, and I'm spending almost $5 for a gallon of milk. 
If I go to the carry out two blocks down the street from me, that gallon of milk is five dollars. Now how is that how is that fair for me? Because in y'all's neighborhoods, y'all are paying a dollar nineteen to a dollar thirty nine for that same gallon of milk. And you've got a hundred times more money than I have available to me. Yet you can buy cheaper milk and I can't. That's the definition of a food desert and y'all are the ones who created it. Y'all's policies created these food deserts. Y'all's uh, uh, supposed solutions have only exacerbated the conditions of these neighborhoods, the, the poor conditions of these neighborhoods, and have only made these neighborhoods even harder to survive in for people who have to rely on a fixed income of limited and are of extremely limited means. How dare you? How dare you with a smile on your face look at people like me and say that you're trying to help me when the only thing that you're doing is is just ramming ramming welfare down all our throats and forcing us to stay on it and then creating a system that makes it next to impossible to get off of it. Even if we want to open up our own business, we can't do it because you say that that we don't want to. Well, we do want to. And then when we start making moves to try and open up our own business, then what do you do? You start tearing down the available commercial structures so that there's no commercial structure there to reopen. How is that not bigotry? How is that not economic bigotry? And how is that not lies coming out of your mouth about you wanting to help the poor? $600 million needs to help the poor and not rebuild Notre Dame. What have you done for me? What have you done for me except make my neighborhood and the conditions in my neighborhood more and more desperate and make the people in my neighborhood more and more hopeless? Using words like hope and change, you have only increased the sense of hopelessness and worthlessness of these individuals in their own minds. These people don't think that they're worth anything because you treat them like dog crap. And you do it with a smile on your face and an expectation of gratitude and thanks for being discriminated against. You expect us to thank you for discriminating against us for the fact that we're poor. Well, F you. This idea that there's a static 99 and top 1% ruling class, it's just not true, particularly in the United States. And this brings me to myth number four, that capitalism only benefits the wealthy. Uh, we hear this all the time, that America sure is a rich country, but for most people it's terrible. My mom actually told me, like, moving to America just, like, made everything worse. From yeah. where? Are you high right now? You seem to be just doing worse and worse. And nobody really seems to be able to do anything about it. Better You know, why do our parents work all the time and then still bargain for us? Because you spend too much. A system in place that keeps us there. A system in place that keeps us there. Well, yeah, there is a system in place that keeps you there, honey. It's called the Democratic National Committee. It's called Democratic Policies are keeping you there. There's a reason that folks in the Blexit movement call neighborhoods like mine a Democrat plantation. Because they've seen, they've lived there, and they know that it isn't George W. Bush in Washington, D.C. that made their city, their poor neighborhoods crap holes. It was the city council of that city and the mayor of that city and the county commissioners of that county, the, the zoning commissioners, the, 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 all, it, it's the local politicians, most of whom, the overwhelming majority of whom have a D after their name. Those are the ones who made the conditions in that neighborhood like that. George W. Bush didn't do that. I, I don't like George W. Bush. I have no special place in my heart for him. But he's not the one that turned West Philadelphia into a shithole. He's not the one. Donald Trump is not the one who turned my neighborhood into a shithole. In fact, Donald, Donald Trump probably doesn't even know my neighborhood even exists. He's certainly never, he, he's been to Toledo, but he's never been to my neighborhood. So, this is just, the, you know, this, this, this means... Uh, means website behind its paywall. Of course, I'm not going to be able to afford to pay because I can't, I can't afford to pay for any paywalled uh, content. I just don't have that kind of money. I, that's not, uh, that is not a fiscally responsible expenditure for me to make. You know, that it's, it's, it's just not a smart expenditure to make. I have better things to spend my money on uh, than $9.99 a month uh, to when I'm already spending close to $100 a month just for my internet and landline telephone connection in the first place. Why am I going to spend 
out of $771 a month, why am I going to spend $10 of that to watch some means paywalled content that's only going to spew out lies? And, and, and there's a lot of folks in this neighborhood who are going to be paying for that content, money that they don't have and that they shouldn't be spending on that. They, they are going to be spending money to believe those lies because you know that it's comforting to be told by somebody who is in a better position than you that it's it's that you're a victim and then they they try and point the finger at somebody who didn't actually have anything to do with the the status that they're in the the people who are telling poor people that they're victims are the ones who are victimizing the poor people and that's the ultimate hypocrisy that is the ultimate hypocrisy and lies yeah, and, and now it's it's so bad that poor people in this neighborhood have now become overseers of this uh, Democrat sharecropper plantation, and they enforce that forced gratitude and forced thankfulness for abuse and 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 uh, you know real crumbs, real crumbs. You know, I mean, I mean the, these you know, food pantries are not giving out adequate food. And there, there's no instruction. It's one of the reasons why I started this channel is to show people how you can survive off of food stamps and food pantries because most people don't know how to do it because they're so busy listening to how much they're a victim and nobody's giving them the information on what they need to support themselves in a reasonable and responsible manner so that they can have more money available to them, more disposable income available to them to take advantage of these opportunities that are all over the place to be able to get out of poverty. No, 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 no. They don't want that. They don't want that. The poverty industrial complex and the homeless industrial complex is making way too much money at the top end to actually help poor people out. And so, yeah, the, 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 the statistics, the Census and Bureau of Labor Statistics do show that only one quarter of 1% of the people in the 43604 zip code between the ages of 18 and 34 will ever break out of poverty. But the reason for that is because of leftist policies. And it is because of, of disincentivization for new business development in my neighborhood. We've got a master plan going on right now that, that came out in 2017. And it's putting lipstick on a pig. More lipstick on a pig. And my neighborhood is still completely ignored. They're talking about making a park down on Summit Street and turning Toledo into a walkable city. Well, how, what kind of, you're talking about both sides of your mouth. You can't have it both ways. You're either going to make a walkable city or you're going to prevent people from opening up businesses by forcing them to spend $2 million on parking lots that they don't need and are never going to get used. Which is it? Which is it? Parking lots or walkable city? Which is it? And why aren't you putting any money into my neighborhood? You, you, you spend millions of dollars putting up wheelchair ramps on all the corners of all the sidewalks. I remember when y'all did that. But you never fixed the sidewalks in between the wheelchair ramps. So all them folks in wheelchairs, and there's a lot of people in my neighborhood in, in little electric scooter wheelchairs. There's a lot of them. And even after that massive construction project that built all them wheelchair ramps on all the corners... Well, then folks in wheelchairs are still rolling down the middle of the street because they can't get down the sidewalks that are broken into tiny little pieces by 80 years of ignoring this neighborhood. Our streets, it costs people in this neighborhood four times more per year to drive their cars if they have them because the conditions of the roads in not just this neighborhood, but the whole city of Toledo tears your car up so much. I mean, there's folks that have to replace all four of their tires every single year because you can't keep your roads paved. You can't keep the sidewalks. You can't keep the, the, the street lights on. You can't keep the, the uh, you can't fix crosswalks. A crosswalk between uh, at uh, North Erie Street uh, crossing Cherry Street, that crosswalk is useless. You might as well not even push the button because you're going to have to stand there through four or five lights before that crosswalk even gives you a walk light. And these are lights that, you know, these are times when there's hardly any cars coming down that street. But good Lord, if you look poor and you jaywalk across that light, you're likely to get a ticket. How is that not bigotry? Because that's the only crosswalk that crosses Cherry Street that acts like that. It's the only one. Any other crosswalk uh, that, that goes across Cherry Street, that crosswalk turns at every single light. If you push that button, you're going to get the crosswalk at the next light, except for North Erie and Chariot. North Erie, which is right at the entrance to my neighborhood, if you're at that crosswalk, you may stand there through four or five traffic lights before you get a crosswalk light. And that means if you've got an appointment to get to, 
that you have to be at a certain time at. Because if th folks who are coming from a neighborhood, if they've got court date, they got to cross that crosswalk. But if they're going to get to that court date on time, they either have to leave 15 minutes early so they can stand there for 10 minutes for the crosswalk to turn, or they're going to have to jaywalk and risk getting another ticket and being even more in the criminal justice system that you're putting them in. You talk about criminal justice system discriminating against the poor. You're the ones running the criminal justice system in Lucas County. You're the ones doing this. Stop blaming conservatives on shit that you do. I mean, that's like you taking a crap in the middle of my living room floor and then blaming Donald Trump for taking that crap when I watched you take the crap in the first place. How dare you? Go to hell. Now, I'm a, there's another video coming up after this one. Right after this one, I'm, I'm going to film it right now. That's why I'm wearing this outfit. We'll film it right now because this is not the first time that we have faced this situation. This is not the first time that we've faced this situation. And the people that are on social media calling it out right now are not the first people doing it. I'm going to read a speech that has not been read aloud in 116 years. This speech was first delivered in 1903. And no other presidential speech could possibly apply more to April 2019 than President Theodore Roosevelt's speech of Labor Day, 1903. So this follow-up, history speaks more eloquently than I do. So go right on to the next video because I'm still talking about the same thing.